This week has flown. It's already Thursday. It's time for us to head into the weekend. But before we do, let's take a look at those top stories making headlines with me, Rolene Marks, right here on the Israel Brief, brought to you as always by these guys, lay of the land. So let's take a look at those top stories and dominating the headlines in Israel and drawing widespread condemnation of Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas's comments last month addressing a meeting of his uh, Fatah faction. The Palestinian Authority president stated, amongst other comments, that Ashkenazi Jews were not Semites, that Ashkenazi Jews are in fact descendants from the Khazars, a common anti-Semitic trope that is trotted out. He also said that Hitler and Europe fought Jews because they were moneylenders and usurpers. And this is not the first time that Abbas has made inflammatory comments like this. And it is not the first time he used the opportunity also to lambaste the Balfour Declaration. If you recall, in 1917, the Balfour Declaration was uh, one of the seminal documents that uh, gave birth to the modern state of Israel. This was when Lord Balfour, with the um, backing of of the King of England agreed that Jews do deserve their own homeland in their or their own country rather in their ancestral homeland. Now Abbas's vile comments have drawn widespread condemnation. Just a short moment ago Deborah Lipstadt, the US Special Envoy on anti-Semitism condemned him as did the Embassy of France in Israel. Also condemning his repugnant comments have been the chairman of Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Memorial and Museum, our National Holocaust Memorial and Museum, Danny Dayan, Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, Germany's ambassador to Israel, Stefan Siebert, and many, many organizations as well. What, of course, is to be expected and, and is still dumbfounding is the fact that the mainstream media have not picked up on his disgusting comments. But heartening has been uh, seeing some Palestinians, in fact, condemning his comments. Not that uh, uh, some of them are going to be wanting to make peace with Israelis, but they recognize just how offensive these comments are. Now, this is not Abbas's first rodeo to to anti-Semitism vol. The Palestinian Authority president did his dissertation, his doctoral dissertation, denying the Holocaust. And just last year, he was heavily criticized and condemned by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, where he uh, accused Israel of committing 50 Holocausts. The Chancellor said that he was absolutely disgusted by these comments. Meanwhile, there have been appeals to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres not to give Abbas a platform to give his speech. We are almost at that time of the year where world leaders and uh, Mahmoud Abbas will have the opportunity to address the General Assembly. And there are those appealing to the Secretary General not to allow him to have a platform. In other news, Israelis trapped in Greece are appealing for help and appealing to be rescued from flooding. Greece has seen the largest amount of rainfall in the last 24 hours. In fact, more rain in the last 24 hours than they have seen in a year. One trapped Israeli speaking to Channel 12 said that they are trapped in their hotel, the roads are closed, they are running out of food and cannot get to shops to buy bread or even winter clothes. She said that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have appealed to them to try and ask neighboring people for help with food. Meanwhile, 800 people have been rescued as a result of flooding. Yesterday, news broke that an Emirates flight en route from Dubai to Singapore with 12 Israelis on board had to make an emergency landing in Malaysia. Now, why is this massive news, you ask? Well, I will tell you. Israel and Malaysia do not have bilateral relations, and in fact, the Malaysian president is on record also making horrific anti-Semitic comments. 
The 12 Israelis on board did not have to disembark. In fact, the plane landed as a result of poor weather. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who say that in these cases where uh, there are no bilateral ties, they act on behalf of Israeli citizens, were in constant contact with those on the plane to ensure that they were okay. The plane departed shortly after that for Singapore. And finally, we're ending the week on a good news story. An Israeli rock sensation, Ishai Ribor, played to a packed audience at Madison Square Gardens in New York. This is quite historical because he is the first Israeli to play in the garden. Next year, Noah Kirel, our very own unicorn, will also take to the stage at Madison Square Garden. So if you want to see Noah in action, make sure you get your tickets. And that's it from me for this edition of the Israel Brief. Don't forget to check in on me on Ma in with me on Monday. Wow, it's been one of those weeks. In the meantime, don't forget our, uh, uh, our website is at www.layoftheland.online. We have a whole plethora of new content. We're on Facebook at Lottel's site. Our YouTube channel, as always, is at The Israel Brief. And if you like our content, please consider subscribing. And we're on X there. I've got a draft this week at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Raleen Marks. This is The Israel Brief. We wish you all a wonderful, restful weekend. Shabbat Shalom, and I'll catch you again on Monday.